good idea. It's such a great question. I always wish I thought of that question myself. Um, so what makes a good idea is if the entrepreneur is passionate about the problem, that's, you can see that in a pitch. And the second thing that makes a good idea, or actually there's a couple, but the second one is if the entrepreneur has a lived experience of the problem, so you've got a story that they're telling that relates to your connection to the problem. The third thing that makes a really good idea is when you know the money side of the idea. So you know how much the idea costs to produce, how much you can sell the idea for, and when you look at those two numbers together, you can see that the business is sustainable financially. That's a really compelling thing. The magic thing, in a real, the, the difference between a good idea and a great idea is when the young person has hustled. Now, hustle as a word has a lot of like connotations around it, like getting up at 3 a.m., like going hard, running 10K. I don't do any of that. It takes me an hour and a half to get out of bed. I have a nine minute snooze that I get 10 times. I definitely don't get around that. However, what I mean by hustle is if you can stand up and show that you've done something more than write a pitch. So last year's grand finalist, Culture Good, won because they had a good idea, but they'd gone and gotten pre-orders for their hoodies that totaled like 55. And so the judges knew if they gave them the money, the hoodies were already sold. They kind of hustled to get the pre orders The year before that, Tanika won, she had a good idea, but what made it great was that she pitched the Ipswich Chamber of Commerce and had secured a couple of thousand dollars in sponsorship before she got up to the pitch. So they kind of had a little bit of traction. They've done something more than write a really good pitch. So those are the things that make for a really great idea. when the entrepreneur is passionate, and that passion doesn't mean a slick presentation. Every year, our finalists are not great public speakers. So who hates speaking? Yeah, who gets like almost sick, like they need to vomit? Yeah, please don't vomit, I'm a sympathy vomiter. So if you guys vomit, then I'm gonna vomit. It gets really awkward for everyone. Um, or most of our grand finalists hate presenting. So you being passionate doesn't mean that you have to be a great presenter. You just have to be authentic in your pitch. So I wouldn't worry if you feel like you're a sucky speaker because if you're passionate about the idea, you've got a lived experience that you're telling, you know your number, you know your numbers and you hustled a little bit, you've got some traction. All of those things are far more important than if you're a really slick presenter every day of the week. Um, believe in like lean startups, so what's the quickest way to get a couple of products in the market to test them? So if you can <coughs> source the materials locally in order to produce a number of your product and then you can sell them before you pitch, then that's more compelling than doing up the pricing to get like 100 or 200 of them. And so some of the most compelling pitches have been where people have made like a team that I worked with a little while ago who were making wheat bags, I mean there's heaps of them around, but they turned them into a box with a couple of other things and before they pitched at their school showcase, they sold 10 of them. And they just sourced everything locally, made 10 boxes, sold 10 boxes, but what was compelling is that they said we've sold out of our first run. That's way more compelling than saying we've done the prices to get a thousand units made. So I would look at what's the quickest, fastest way, even if it costs a little bit more money, because when you source things in smaller quantities, your cost price is going to be higher. But if you can sell out of that first run, you validate the idea and what you want is the validation of the idea. So if you make 10 of them and nobody buys those 10, it doesn't matter how cheap your cost price is, obviously nobody wants it. So that's what I would be focusing on, is how can I get a, port, a small portion of my product to customers and sell out so that I can say I've sold out. And the faster you sell out, the better. So if you can say we made 10 of them and we sold them in a day, that's very compelling for judges. Even if your margin is smaller for that first run because the cost of your materials are higher because you're producing them yourself. It doesn't have to be big quantities to be compelling. What the judges are looking for and what I look for are passionate young people and ideas with potential. 
So if you can indicate if that means sold out 10, then my brain immediately goes to, oh, I wonder how quickly they sell out 20. Oh, I wonder how quickly they sell out 50. I wonder how quickly they sell out 100. Man, if I took them to another school, how quickly would this school buy? 